So I guess the last part, what to do if you have been diagnosed as bipolar or schizophrenic and you feel that there are a lot of parallels by what I'm saying and what you're saying, if you can identify with this, you might want to, you know, take the chance of getting off your medication. And this is something that your doctors will disagree with. This is something that your family will probably disagree with. Uh, but, you know, it's your life. And if I were in your position, I would take the risk. I mean, I would rather take the risk of uh, living 100% true to myself, being 100% alive, than being on meds for the rest of my life in a, in a life that is sort of half dead. And there's a lot of examples on the internet of people who uh, got off their meds and realized just how dead they were, that they didn't feel up, they didn't feel down, that they weren't really alive. So isn't it worth it to try and take that risk? But who do you take that risk with? That is the important question. And what you need when you go into this experience and you go off the meds, because you will go into crisis again, where right where your psychiatrist would say, see, I told you so. You're going you're gonna to have a crisis, and you are. And the reason is that the original diagnosis and the way they treated you the first time repressed your experience. So your, your experience is back in that locker called your subconscious. It's back there again. So what you need to do is you need to get off the meds. You need to have some people around you that you trust. Maybe you can get a transpersonal psychologist, someone who's familiar with the work of Ken Wilber, Stan Groff, uh, Abraham Maslow, people like this, uh, to be with you. You could talk to a transpersonal psychologist. That's very good. Maybe someone at the Spiritual Emergency Network, someone like that, before you're ready to go off your medications. Then when you do it, you have people around you that are really prepared for anything. They need to keep you safe. They need to make sure that you do not do damage to yourself or anyone else. And honestly, if you start to hurt yourself or you start to hurt anyone else, I'm sorry, but maybe you do need, do need to go back on your medication. But if you're just, I don't know, taking your clothes off, if you can't sleep at night, if you want to sing all night, if you want to cry all night, if you want to talk, 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 which a lot of people do in this situation, these are the kind of behaviors that you should be allowed to express. If you think of yourself as the King of England and you're back on Earth, uh, you're reincarnated uh, Sir Lancelot to save the world, this is something that needs to be shared with people that you can trust, that people know that you're speaking symbolically. And through this process of sharing your inner truth, even if it's a little bit crazy to the people around you, you will come around, you will be processed, and you will start to heal. So these people that you need around you, they need to be people that you could share anything with. You know, you don't need, you know, your uptight grandmother. Uh, you don't need your priest who's thinking that, well, this is some sort of possession or something. But you need people that are really ready for anything. Maybe people that have had drug experiences in the past, people who have tried LSD, so they're sort of open to dealing with radical, crazy behavior, uh, but are mature enough to deal with you and set your own limits so that you don't hurt yourself. Because when you're in that other state, you may try and test your reality. You might think, wow, this is all a dream. Maybe I can fly and jump out the 13th story of your apartment window. You don't want to do that, and you need people there to stop you from doing it. You're going to seem totally nuts. You're going to seem just as insane as you were the first time. But just ride it out and see what happens. And from the books I've read, I think that most people should peak. In the, once they've peaked in their experience, and people don't know what to do with them, um, it shouldn't be more than maybe a month before the symptoms start to die down, and the symptoms start to fade and you can start to integrate what has happened to you back into your life. You're not working at this point. You're not trying to function. You're not trying to be productive. You're writing. You're dreaming. You're writing down dreams. You're meditating. Uh, you're sharing your experiences. You're singing. That's what you're doing. One analogy that I like to give is that uh, when you go into this crisis, it's as if you're sick inside and you need to vomit. And then you go to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist and your parents, they go, Oh my God, she's vomiting, she's vomiting. Uh, we need to stick a sock in her mouth to make her stop vomiting. Because that's what they're doing when they suppress this crisis. They are sticking a sock in your mouth to stop you from vomiting your uh, subconscious paraphernalia that needs to come up. Then when you go off your medications, which are basically the sock, 
You take that sock out, you stop your medications, and ugh, you start to vomit again because you didn't vomit enough the first time. And the psychiatrist says, okay, there they are. They need the sock back in. They need the medications I told you. And you go, oh, you're right. You know, we've got to stop this. But it's just the vomit coming out some more. That vomit needs to come out entirely. And it will stop eventually in its own time. And it might take even as much as a month. And it's an ugly process. So you need people around you that are going to be like, you know what, buddy? Vomit all over me. I'm here. I can take it. I can take it. I can listen to you. I can hear this. You're Lancelot. Okay, you're Sir Lancelot. Who am I? If you're Sir Lancelot, who am I? If you're Jesus Christ, who am I? Am I St. Paul? Am I St. Peter? That's okay. We don't need to understand the process entirely. We don't need to diagnose or analyze these people. We don't need to tell them what's happening to them. We need to understand what they're telling us. Just tell me. Tell me your story. Let me understand it from your perspective. Nothing is more healing than listening to these people. And it's not easy to listen. And it's not easy to listen because in order to understand these people, we need to open ourselves up to their experience. And we never want to think of ourselves as, in a sense, crazy. We don't want to think that what is happening to our best friend, what is happening to our brother, what is happening to our son, could actually happen to us. But the sad truth is, it could. Actually, it's not a sad truth at all. It's quite beautiful. I realize that some of you out there might be bipolar, might have taken your meds for many years, or might be schizophrenic and think that what I am saying here is somehow dangerous. Um, and I admit there is a bit of a risk. There is a bit of a risk involved. Anytime you try and live, anytime you try and take a chance in your life and do something new, it was a risk for me to quit my advertising career. It was a risk for me to move to Brazil. It was a risk for me to give up my religion. But I did all those things, and I'm very happy that I did. They were decisions that led to me being a true individual and, a, I think, a basically a happy person that can help other people. Life is a risk. Um, if you're not ready to risk, then, yeah, you need to stay on your meds for your entire life because it is a risk. Uh, don't do it if you are terrified. I, I can't recommend doing it. But if you have the courage and you think that there is a lot that I've said that connects with what your experience was, let's talk. Other people that can help you are transpersonal psychologists, uh, people who follow the work of people like Dr. Stan Groff or Ken Wilbur, for example. These kind of psychologists, they recognize the importance of understanding the person's soul and spirit in their psychological development. They are very good at knowing about altered states of consciousness, and they recognize things like going crazy as a way of spiritual renewal and spiritual growth. So you could talk to a transpersonal psychologist. You could talk to people at the Spiritual Emergency Network, uh, which is found all over the world now and has an internet site, which is right here. I've put a number of links on a blog page of mine, which I call Bipolar or Just Waking Up. And you can take a look at the information that I've got there. And I'll be happy to talk to you if you'd like to email me. Uh, ever since my crisis, I've wanted to help other people in the same situation. It's just recently that I realized how wide a range of people it is that are having experiences similar to mine. Good luck. I'm with you.